In this video, I wanted to go over the process of writing some code and processing and exporting the results so it can be drawn on the AxiDraw, a pen plotter that allows us to draw digital files. I wanted to create a sketch using this star function that is uh, an example on the processing website. And uh, there's actually some code here that uh, constructs that star. So I'm gonna grab that code first, put that into my sketch, um, and you can see it takes uh, five arguments, uh, x and y values, a radius one and a radius two, and then uh, the number of points. So what I wanna do is create kind of a, a random star grid. I think that's what I'm going for. I'm just gonna do this quickly. Uh, maybe it's something like this. Um, we'll start with the white background. Um, like I said, we're gonna make a grid, so I think I can do two for loops and uh, add to them plus equals. Maybe I will create a integer or some sort of size or value, uh, sort of a spacer or something, some some measurement here. And maybe I'll, I'll just make it um, maybe 100 to begin with. Um, I can always change it later. So this is going to move in the x direction, the horizontal direction. And then I'm going to make a another loop to move in the vertical direction. So that's why I'm gonna say, while it's less than height. And what I'll do is I'll call that star function and I just want to, again, make sure that these things match up. Um, I think we could do i and j for the x and y values. Uh, for the, uh, let's, let's see, the, um, the two uh, radiuses that we it looks like we want to put the smaller one first and then the bigger one so in this case this is a small radius one and this is radius two so we can put in maybe some random values maybe a random a small random value uh, maybe sizer divided by two and then the other one maybe we'll set the range a little bit bigger so it, it runs from a random value sizer divided by two all the way to sizer this might be um, it might be weird and it might be okay. Um, the number of points looks like it, it needs to be an integer. Yes. So uh, while I could have it be random, I want to run that integer function on it to make it an integer. Maybe we'll say we'll go as, as wild as 30. Um, I think that should run oh, one more parentheses. Let's see if that works. Um, this is probably going to be a little bit jittery. Um, yeah, it's, it's drawing all these stars here. Um, uh, looks like I'm a little bit shifted on that left side. Maybe I should shift everything over a little bit. Uh, let's see if I can do that. Um, so instead of uh, drawing an I and, I and J, maybe I'll do plus sizer divided by two. And I think I could do the same here to just offset it so it fits into the middle of the screen. Uh, and hopefully that will run. There you go. So you can see I'm, I'm creating these random uh, star shapes. Maybe it's a little bit too big. Uh, maybe that's my fault for setting this range. Uh, I'm going to like have all these values. So um, instead of going up to sizer uh, here, it's going to go up to sizer divided by two. And I think this should give me a more controlled or less uh, overlapping view. There we go. So these are just some shapes and I could go and you know, draw these. I'm, and I'm going to use this as a starting off point for uh, an axi draw drawing, which I'll, I'll go ahead and prepare, prepare next. Okay, so I've just saved this file uh, in, in my processing folder. And in order to get this ready for the axi draw, which is a pen plotter, um, I want to convert this, or I want to be able to save this into uh, vector graphics. Uh, what I'll do is, is use PDF to save that. Um, and in, on the processing website, there's a whole section on PDFs. Uh, and you can grab the, that code from here. And I, I think this is like the easiest way for me to um, to do this and also to show you how, how I'm going to save this down. Um, because I want to see what I'm drawing. And I, um, the, the mode that I've 
discovered that I like in this case is to just get a single frame from an animation um, while I'm watching it. So uh, the way I'm going to do that is by importing the processing library or the PDF library, making a Boolean for record and turn it on and off. Uh, in this case, I think it's a mouse press, but I could make it a key press if I wanted to. So what I'm going to do is put this up here. Oh, make sure I make this a comment. Uh, okay, so that's set up there. Um, what we want to happen is record. We'll, we're going to have two if statements, a record um, at the top that begins recording if it's true. And then if the record is true, we got to end the recording so that we're not just, uh, we just don't keep recording over and over. Um, so I'm going to put, uh, put that up at the top of the draw. Anything that comes after is going to be recorded. If, if I put this after the background, then the background wouldn't be recorded. Or if the lines were, weren't there, um, that would be an issue. So I'm going to make sure I also grab the second part. And that's going to go at the end of the draw, clean that code up. And then we need some way to turn that uh, Boolean true and false, turn it on and off. Uh, we'll just use a mouse press for right now. Let's run this code. And I'm going to just um, save out a version. I think that would, I think that's going to save it. Let me look into my folder. Um, Oh, I should also say that we are when we're saving it here, if we look at the code, we're using the frame number. If we put in these number marks, uh, it's going to uh, save it like that. So you can see that it saved uh, the eighth frame. And this is what it looks like. And this is a PDF file. And we could go ahead and bring this uh, into Inkscape to get it ready for uh, the AxiDraw. Um, because I'm a designer and used to working with Illustrator, I'm going to actually just bring it into there first and just clean some things up and then I'll, I'll bring it to Inkscape and, and show you how to actually produce and draw the file. I've just opened up one of the PDFs that I saved uh, from processing. One weird thing I realized, I was trying to open up, um, like for example, this file directly in Illustrator and I was getting some weird error. Um, the file format is having difficulties. Um, I'm not sure if this is because I'm on older version of Illustrator or maybe because I'm using Processing 4, but my workaround was to open it in preview and then export it from here as a PDF. And for some reason, when I did that, I exported a second version. I called it frame 0018A, and that seemed to open up fine. So um, if you have that issue, that um, that's probably the way to solve it. One thing I like to do when looking at files for AxiDraw is to look at the outline. So I'll do Command Y. Um, because any line that's here, any mark, is going to get drawn on the AxiDraw. So I want to clean those things up. Like, for example, this background here, even though when I look at it normally I don't see anything, that's going to be drawn. So I probably want to go in, use a direct selection tool, and, and get rid of that. I also want to get rid of, looks like there's some dots here which, you know, sometimes there's just little errors and glitches like that. Um, I'm going to get this ready for um, uh, the Axie Draw, and I want to uh, print something out at 8.5 by 11. So I want this to kind of fit, you know, centrally within that page. I'm going to save it onto that size. Uh, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, I think what I need to do is go to my document setup and edit my artboards. Um, Because I'm not sure what size this is. Uh, so oh, it looks like it's already set to letter, which is good. Um, I just want to make sure that that's set correctly. OK, so I think this will be OK. It might be a little bit close to the edges. So again, if I think that this is going on to in half by 11 piece of paper, maybe I want a little bit of a border or a little space along the edge. So I just scale that down. And what I like to do is save this as a SVG. And uh, I'll open up the SVG in Inkscape and print from there using the AxiDraw. Here we go. I'm just saving this out as an SVG. Um, Actually, I think I should use use the artboards. Let's try that just to be safe. All right, let's see. We save that out, and uh, I'm going to open this up in the AxiDraw and get it printing. 
Okay, so I've opened the file up now in a program called Inkscape. Um, I'm running this on another machine, which has a vertically oriented monitor. So it's uh, that's why it's in this uh, orientation. The first thing I want to do is is make sure my paper size, my canvas size is correct. Um, you know, I tried to resize this in Illustrator, but it looks like I had an issue where it actually didn't quite line up. I just reset in the document properties, uh, the size to letter. And I'm just, you know, uh, I, I'm going to do some um, reformatting here. I'm going to change the scale so it fits the page a little bit better. You can also align this to the page, uh, center align it. Um, and that will hopefully give me a better composition. So you know, even though I, I thought I could prepare an Illustrator, I've noticed sometimes I have um, some mismatches. If if you have thoughts on how to uh, avoid that, uh, please let me know. I'd, I'd love to find out. But uh, I think it's good to know a little bit how to operate in Inkscape. Uh, I don't love this program. It's not as intuitive to me, but uh, I can work, th work in this. Um, so when I get this ready to go, what I will do is go up to one of the extensions in this program. Uh, I, I've installed um, this, uh, and my AxiDraw is connected to uh, this machine. Uh, so I'm just doing some final tweaking on the size here. Um, so I'm going to go up to the extensions, and there's an AxiDraw control extension. Uh, from here, I'm going to, I, I can check the actually draw uh, you know pen placement, see if it's high enough on the page or if it's going to make contact. Uh, and then when I'm ready to uh, start this, I will just hit go to the plot tab and go to apply. And from there, uh, I'm going to start drawing. You can hear what the machine sounds like when it's drawing. It makes this little creaky noise. Uh, and here is just some time-lapse footage of the drawing. Uh, and at the very end, uh, we have our drawing, which we created in processing and then uh, exported for the AxiDraw.